And welcome to One More Thing. I'm with Dr. Larry Bauckham this morning. Good morning. Wow, what a, man, what a powerful sermon yesterday. Um, I mentioned in staff, I was, so many people were at church yesterday. It was a huge crowd and you get caught up being pastors. You talk with people, you pray with people. And so I missed the music, but I got in for both sermons. And it was absolutely fantastic. A masterful piece of exegeting that passage, particularly, and this is what I want to ask you about. I have never heard that passage of the rich young ruler. Mark 10. Wow. Like I get chills the way you framed it, the way you interpreted it and presented it. I've kept all the law my whole life. I've been being good. You lack one thing. Go do good. Right. Tell us. Tell us about that. That's so powerful, man. Well, I think he came to Jesus and he said, you know, a uh, good teacher. He says, well, why do you call me good? So he sets it up right at the beginning. There's none good but God the Father. He said, well, how do I inherit eternal life? Well, you keep all the commandments. Well, I've kept, you know, all, and he lists all the commandments. He said, that's good. That's good. But one thing you lack, and we don't hear the be good, the do good, sell all that you have and give to the poor. But what you really lack is you spend all your life being good and keeping the commandments, but you've never really done good. Mm. So how do you do that? And uh, someone would, you know, so he, he walks away sorrowful because he doesn't know that he has the opportunity to give away all his resources because it's family, probably family wealth. Right. But he wanted to do good. But there's a step between being good and doing good. There's a real interesting things that I don't mind being internally good. But if you require me to be external to where it costs. Mm-hmm. Do I have to change my lifestyle? I mean, uh, that's a difference. Yeah. Years ago, I had a, uh, we used to do these stewardship campaigns. We're trying to build Suncoast, and we do a campaign. And one of the things we'd say is, I want, I want to challenge you to give until it changes your lifestyle. Because you've never really given until mm. it changes your lifestyle. Man. You're talking about sacrificial giving. <laughs> when it changes your lifestyle. Yes, sir. And the reason we're here today is because people took that to heart, and, uh, and they gave. And it changed their lifestyle. I know I gave to it changed my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do some things because I had committed over a period of two, three years to, to make these uh, financial commitments. Yep. At Suncoast, it's not a, for us, it's not about the money. That's right. It's about what are you doing to change the world? What are you doing? And for you and me, you know, we grew up in the environment of be good. Mm-hmm. Don't smoke. Don't drink. Don't curse. Don't do this. Don't do this. Right. Don't do this. And that's a measure. Are you a good person? Yeah, don't do all these things. But what do you do? Yeah, and uh, and I, I'm also amazed at this thought. Oh, they're just such a good person. They do all this good stuff, but they just don't believe right. <laughs> you know, that's the adverse. That's right. that's they're such right. a good person, generous to a fault, will do anything for anybody, but they don't believe exactly the way we believe. So therefore, they're going to burn in hell. It's a shame. Yeah, and I think Jesus would come back and say, yeah. <laughs> and James links all this together that's as right. well. You can't you can't have it one way or the other. Yeah, because when you do good, I think it shows that you are good. And if you, if you want to be good, I think um, there's another step to that. It's a two-part equation. I love that. It seems as though, like, especially in our society, culture, whatever, I don't do those things because I'm against those things. Mm -hmm. But the things I'm for, I rarely do. It seems like it's very oxymoronic sometimes is that I can believe that doing these right things is good and noble and and just, but just don't ask me to do them. I just want to know that they're good Mm -hmm. here to do, but don't like, what is, why, why are, I think that's the problem as a whole with modern Christianity is as long as I believe the right things, I'm good. Right. Just don't ask me to act on them. Don't ask me to become those things, to integrate those things, infuse those things into my life. Why is there such a disconnect in, 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 our, in our church culture today with that? I think it's easier. I mean, mm. it's easier for me to have the right beliefs than it is to have sacrificial actions. Um, I grew up in a denomination. Uh, they were called holiness people. Mm-hmm. Not charismatic holiness, but near. Right. And, uh, and the whole thing was, they said, there's two parts to this whole connection with God. The first is I, and it was like the atonement theory. I had to have the right atonement theory. So I had to believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and I accept that provision. And therefore, because I accept that, I'm in good stature with God. And, and you know, so, so that was justification. 
And the second leg of that whole thing was called sanctification, which is very confusing yeah. even in that denomination to define <laughs> what that is. But for me, it's one is simply saying, okay, I believe all these things. But the second one is I'm going to begin to live a Christ-like life. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? That entails loving people, caring for people. And I use my mom as an example. I mean, there's a lady that would take the neighbor, take food from our table, which was not much, and give it to those less fortunate around us. Mm -hmm. Or she would take people to the to the doctor. She met her husband by taking him to the to the clinic because he couldn't drive. She just said, "Oh, your dog is sick. Let me take you to the veterinarian." She'd mm -hmm. take him there. She just, "I've got a car. I've got wheels." And she went out of her wow. way to do good to all those around her. Yep. Now, if she's listening, to this, I. But she was more interested with her kids. None of my kids ever smoked, drank, cursed. Did none of them ever? So I raised good kids because none of them ever. They're all good. Yeah. But. My question is, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. And uh, show me, do good. And you don't have to to become a priest or a pastor to do good. Yeah, you can do good every day of your life by by seeing somebody that's going through and helping them, or giving them a gift card, or somebody's gone through the storm, helping them clean up their yard debris, or someone that's. Uh, uh, you know, it's hard to find all these specifics. For example, right? Uh, I may not know uh, people who need a car, but I'm part of a community that has a huge network. And maybe someone would come up and say, I want to do good. I want to buy the next car. Mm -hmm. It's $6,000. I want to buy it and because I want to be a part of it. And I want to completely support that. It's one of the things I want to do that's good. Yeah. Or this week, a young couple, they donated their car, their second car. Now, there's two of them. They only they had one car that wasn't running well. Right. But it's a good car. Yeah. And they donated it. We took it. Yep. Put a battery in it, did some, you know, fix the air conditioning, and gave it away. It's a great car to give away. <laughs> yep. And and those are things they did good. They provided something that met somebody who was taking a bus to get to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, a specific need. Do good. That's um, it. But the concentration on being good. Yeah. I mean, James says, "You show me someone's beliefs without actions, and I'll show someone who doesn't have any beliefs at all." Yeah. I mean, even the devils believe and shudder. That's right. But they don't do good. That's right. So I'm trying to do good is a good a good mantra. That's a really good way to put it, to, to just kind of elaborate on that difference. Because I think we get satisfied and content with being good. Mm -hmm. And the doing good is really what transforms us. It's right. really what changes us. And I, you know, especially like, especially like in a political year where the argumentation's always the way I talk about it in my dissertation is we're so focused on winning an argument, being right. But with, with, with God, it's not about being right. Mm -hmm. It's about right being. Right. And that's how I'm living my life. What am I not believing? What am I becoming? What am I transforming into? And I think that's, what's really powerful about Suncoast because you mentioned it in the sermon, we've given away, given away in, in terms of like a monetary number, over a million dollars worth of vehicles to people who have need. Right. So why? Why, why, is, why, why focus on that? Why are we not trying to save souls like a lot of churches are? Like we focus on like the very practical thing and it is very impactful for people. Why is that your heart, Dr. Bachman? Well, I, I think we need to do good. I mean, it's, a, it's that simple. Yeah. We're a community church. We need to make a difference in our community. So we don't want to debate other churches about what they're yeah. doing or what they're believing. But we do believe that when we just, in the, in, the, in the name of God, with love of God in our lives, we begin to help people. The tide is lifted and all the boats go up when the, tides, when the right tide comes on. in. So I, I think, why do we do that? Why do we have a garage and a mechanic? Why do we give away cars? Why do we help people, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes with their utility bills? Why do we open our, our building as a shelter? And, and very clearly, it's a lot more convenient not to. Mm. <laughs> it is work to, to vet people slightly, to try to coordinate giving them a car, to get the car donated, make sure it's running. There's a lot of moving pieces yes. that have to be taken care of. Or to open as a hurricane shelter, it was a lot of work. Yes. I mean, Logistics. for two nights, I slept on the floor. And I didn't get a lot of sleep for those two nights. But why do we do it? Because we have a building that's a category-rated building, and there are people that are out of their mind afraid. Yeah. And they were trying to get in other. Some shelters were closed. Some were full. We opened our building as a shelter, not because we have to. 
Yep. We weren't paid to. As a matter of fact, it's very expensive for us to do what we did because mm-hmm. we fed people. Yep. We did a lot of, I'd say, in the thousands of dollars worth of benefit for the community. But why do we do it? Because it's the right thing for us to do. Yep. And f- and maybe others would say, well, that's not our cup of tea. Good for you. Yeah. No judgment. You do what God calls you to do. We do what God calls us to do. And maybe at the end of the day, we all stand together uh, as brothers, even though we believe differently, Yeah, realizing that we're trying to make a difference in our world that's with awesome. the love of God. That's, that's just amazing. Here's my last question, and respond as terse or as concise as you want. About eight years ago, there was this document that was released that said, hey, we're going to focus on doing good. Mm-hmm rather than these doctrines that try to prescribe being good. And a lot of people from the church left. But your response was not a critical response. It was not a defensive posture. You said the best answer for for that is to continue to do good. Mm -hmm. And we will you 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 had it in you had this faith in your heart and mind that eventually the doing good is going to make sense opposed to these doctrines of just trying to enforce and fear mongering toward being good. Right. And yesterday at church, you saw eight years that church was packed in both services. How does that make you feel knowing like, Hey, we stayed the course to do good. The answer for the bad was the practice of the doing good. Like, I think that's, you've summed it up well. I mean, eight years ago, we could have gotten into a theological argument, and that document contained things about, we're not going to believe the inerrancy of the Scripture. We're not going to believe these fundamentalist-type mentalities. We're going to be an all-inclusive community. We're going to love people, but we're not going to preach about this eternal damnation that I don't think is justified by the Bible. But I have so many pastors and staff that came from so many different theological backgrounds. Mm -hmm. We had to set the standard. We are not going to focus on these things. Matter of fact, I will never preach on eternal damnation. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of us go through some hell, but not the way it's been prescribed because I don't think that's what Jesus taught or right. the Bible teaches. But so when I laid those out, some people said, well, those beliefs are so central to what we think that we just, and they had some encouragement by some other pastors who were afraid. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they, some left, not all, we lost about 500 but we've regained we've regained those 500 and now we're the we're the front of a big wave i think that's going to sweep the nation with a new understanding of christianity mm-hmm. that's more healthy less toxic less doctrinal yeah and more experiential and more uh practice based or praxis or where you really are you're doing the good that's it so uh, that's where we are and we're in a good spot and i'm glad we're there yeah. and i'm grateful for um I hate to say I'm grateful for that incident eight years ago now yeah. because I think it helped us to focus more clearly. Well, it was the right call then. It's the right call today. Yeah. And uh, I hate to see anybody damaged. And the frustration from the damage is when they pulled some people away, they never went there anyway, and now they just quit going. Yeah. And I think that's a shame to pull a lot of unchurched people into that kind of circumstance. We need to keep them in a place where God can help them. But we're getting our share, and there's yeah. so many people coming. There's probably four couples or more, maybe five, that were in the congregation this weekend. They've been there multiple times because we're a shelter. They yeah. like to go to a place wow. that does good. I want to be a part of something that's doing something. I mean, we want the Red Cross, United Way. We want them to do their feet on the ground. But 85% of what you give to them, is an administration cost. That's right. That's right. We simply say, you give here. We try to put 100% back to use in the that's, community. That's exactly right. And that is a, a high level of commitment. And some point, the paper will find out, and uh, <laughs> some of these other nonprofits, these uh, big donors will find out, and they'll give us resources to make it even better. Yep. But that's not why we do it. That's right. We don't give to get. We give because it's the right thing to do, yeah. and we'll find the resource. We just keep giving, and the resource gets, keeps flowing. And we're in a great place, and I'm grateful. Amazing. Proud to be here, Dr. Bachman. Thank you. My pleasure.